What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel for another PvP breakdown video. This is the series where I take a look post commentary at some of the decisions that I make in combat while playing Tarkov. And this is used to maybe help you guys that might be new to the game or explain my thoughts and strategies a little bit more because for the most part, Whenever I'm in a serious encounter, I am completely dialed in and focused up. And you know what? I don't always do a good job explaining every single move or every idea. Today's video, we're going to be covering the basic combat maneuver, a flank. So in most video games that are FPSs, the flank is used to attack your enemy from an angle that they least expect it, either from the sides or from behind. And this can be done by distracting your enemy from one direction and then maneuvering very quickly to a spot where they just, they don't expect you to be. So let's get this started. We're moving up to the health resort. I'm kind of tracking a player that was down at the bus station. And I hear the pain. Shit. That means somebody just hit some razor wire. So I automatically know this person is around level 2. Possibly at 216, 218. Maybe doing some looting. Those gunshots tell me that they're actively engaged. Either against a scavenger or another player. So moving in, if I take it nice and slow. It's going to give me a good opportunity to ambush these guys. Possibly. The suppressor also lets me know that these guys are probably rocking some pretty serious kit on top of that because if you can afford a suppressor, you okay. can probably afford better attachments. And if you can afford better attachments, then you can afford armor. That also means they can afford contacts. So I'm going to slow walk through level one. I hear their footsteps directly above me near that elbow where the barbed wire is. So they can definitely hear he's me. He's above me. Yeah, he's above me. Could even be on level 3 because there's a hole in the floor that I need to be careful. So I'm trying to make the smallest amount of noise possible. Keep on creeping. Make sure my gun is at like the corner angle so if somebody was about to peek. I see a dead body. So you can try to wait to see if they're going to go loot it. It's a cheeky idea, but I mean, it's probably one of the strongest. The rooms. Footsteps right. Oh, Whiffed. Shit. He went out of the room, back into another room. I wasn't able to get the amount of kills. I, I throw a flashbang. A two. I acknowledge that they're a team of two. I'm going to move up to make sure that there isn't a third one that is possibly covering them from the hole. And I'm also going to throw a grenade through that hole. And just in case one of them are like peeking out of one of the doors near 216, it might actually kill them or at least push them back a bit. Make them a little bit more defensive and think twice about actually uh, pushing me. Mm. I'm not happy about not this situation because I fucked up. They know I'm on this side. And they can just sit in a doorway and peek. So he's trying to shoot me through that uh, bookshelf. Because he thinks I'm going to be peeking that shelf. So they're already lined up and ready to go. So here we go. It's time to think about a strategy. How can we attack these guys? Woo! Oh! I'm thinking they're doing a quick aggressive push here. So I'm going to just hold an angle. See if they come yeah. through the corridor. And they don't. Holding that Could angle. Could just be one guy. I want to go down and around, but he'll hear the flank. That's the only thing. Well, hold on. He won't hear the flank if I go outside, I don't think. He's got contacts on, of course. Hold on. I got a risky idea. So I need to position myself away from the building because like, he's got contacts. You could go on a balcony right now and see me do this. But if we go super far out... So he can't hear me running around. I'm also doing my best to not hit the yeah. bushes. Because that's going to give him a big audio notification that I'm here. I got no... I basically have like no armor on, by the way. I have like... Well, I got a good gazelle and shit. But all my armor is low durability. And I have no helmet, so... He's going to hear me jump, though. That's the problem. He's going to hear me jump. 
Actually, if you can hit that ramp at the right angle, you don't have to jump and you can slow walk up. It just requires a little bit of patience. Um, usually, I can't make that work, So, but I got lucky this time. So now that I'm inside the building, slow walking again, because if they're still in that hallway holding that angle, I do not want them to hear me at all. Not really aggressive, taking my time, using direction to the advantage. Oh, that worked. Wow. I love it when a plan comes together. So I'm still at this point not sure if there's more than one player. So I'm going to continue to slow walk down the hallway and keep my optic at the ready just in case somebody pops out. There's another one. So I'm going to pause this for a minute so we can take a breather because there's a lot going on. So I'm in an aggressive fight with another player. He's running into the hallway, back into rooms, spraying. I'm doing the exact same thing. At this point, you don't want to be the defensive person, I don't think. You need to make sure that you're staying mobile. You're not putting yourself in a corner because of that peeker's advantage. You need to be as aggressive as your enemy here. And as you'll see, that's the exact same strategy that he is also deploying. God damn. So obviously, I didn't really think about the outcome there, um, but it kind of worked out in my favor. I ran back into the room to get a nice reload because I was running low on my magazine. That caused the player to run down the hallway thinking I was going to become the defensive player and he was going to get a nice, easy, cheeky grenade kill because I would have been stuck in the corner. But the moment that magazine goes back into the gun, I'm back on my feet trying to go into the hallway. I push out of the doorway. He's caught with his pants down and I get the kill and a lot of nice juicy gear because of it too. These guys, I think they did an okay job. The only thing that I would have recommended for these guys to do a little bit better is use their aggression in the very early part of this battle. They essentially allowed me to flank around them and they didn't move. It felt like they weren't confident in their ability to kill me um, or they put too much value in peeking out of these rooms. Now this also translates pretty well to other shooters, but if you are the more aggressive player and you are laying down fire and actually doing damage, you are putting yourself in a better position and you're also saying that, hey, I'm confident I can win this battle and you're going to make your enemy possibly overthink the situation and then make a mistake. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, you won't win all of them. I mean, if that player didn't throw the grenade, it probably would have been a coin toss. He was rushing, I was rushing and I just got lucky with the M995. Funny enough, in this encounter, I also was not running a helmet, but you know, these guys had weapons that it wouldn't have really mattered if I was wearing a face shield or not. I was rocking the shattered face mask. But anyways, guys, I think this is a great lesson on flanking and being creative whenever you're attacking enemies and also being very aggressive in CQB situations. It's just the way Tarkov is played right now. So you can either adapt to the meta or continue to hide in corners and continue to get killed by netcode. There really isn't much of a choice. If you want to start to increase your survival rating, you're going to have to start to become more aggressive until the netcode gets better. Thanks for watching this week's PvP Breakdown, and I'll see you guys next time.